crease for it. It's another beautiful day. Today's one of those days that you can smell fall in the air. Gradually the nights have become cooler. The days are still hot. Today predicted to be 90 something. And where I live, almost every day is sunshine. <laughs> oh well. That's why they call it the sunshine state. And that can be a blessing. And, you know, people enjoy it. And I love living in Alaska when I lived there and I loved living different parts of the country because I enjoy the seasons and the weather. But have you ever found yourself just tired? You have the desire to do more, to be more, to accomplish more, and yet you find yourself tired. Sometimes that's a good thing. Because sometimes we have the desire or the want, and it's a want, to be more than what God would have us to do. Sometimes God wants us to be still when we want to be active. Sometimes we want to build giant skyscrapers to the sky and bring all the family of God together in one place at one time and just comfort them and encourage them and bless them and cause them to go out and do marvelous works in the Lord. And you know, that's a good thing. But sometimes when you think you want to bring everybody together, do you find yourself bringing everybody together and wanting to make them into your image? <laughs> Instead of letting them go be their choice and their direction for their ministry? In other words, in the body of Christ, in salvation, in being born again, there is a huge spectrum that God has saved, whether we know it or not whether we accept it or not. Jesus himself has chosen his people out of all the denominations and non-denominations and fundamentalist Christians to be his bride. And he is the one who has woven them together as a garment is woven into being conformed to his image the way God the Father sees fit and not the way we might want. And I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes that's challenging. Sometimes I have been to different varieties of churches and, you know, I've sat in them and thought, what in the world are they doing? <laughs> and most of the time, it was a good thing to say, what in the world are they doing? But there were also times in the Lord that God would literally sit next to me and I could feel as though his body were pressing against me and as though he were leaning over. But I would hear very audibly God say, these are my people. And I would look around and sure enough, there were people that were blessed. Now there were people that were religious or people that were you know, exuberant or carried away, but there were always in every one of the congregations, someone, the Lord would show me and I'd look at them and I'd know I would know with all my heart. I could just see it in them. Oh, they were they were saved. And they were in love with God. And they were in love with Jesus. And they knew it. And that is what God means by He has His called out ones. He has His people that are sanctified or set apart and placed exactly strategically where He wants them in the entire Christendom, Christianity as it were, for His purpose. Not yours and not mine. And he coordinates that perfectly for his own reasons. And we're not called to tell people how to be. We're called to show them who we are in Jesus and what has worked for us. Because in the internet now, we have the opportunity to touch a life in some other part of the world. So it may not make sense to you, but somehow 
teaching people to you know leave the church that they're in to go to some other church might not make much sense when the only church in town is one especially if they're in africa or china or they're in asia or they're in india or they're in some place where it's so remote that they just happen to see your message and the only thing they have is the body of believers that they've gathered together in and then you're telling them something that they ought not to do so i would say you know take the time every day to be aware of what you're doing and saying because you have jesus in you and don't go beyond what god wants you to be in telling someone else to be something that god doesn't want them to be but try to recognize the gift of God that he's given them, which is a personal relationship, that they can follow Jesus as best they know how and become all that God intended for them, exactly the way they are. Because today, they may be just as tired as you are, just as wanting and caring for the body of believers and Christians as you are, and be full of the love of God as you are, and yet be completely different than you are, and still be in God's family. In daily life, the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. You are, as lively stones, built up a spiritual house. Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building, fitly framed together, grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are buried, builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. See, God wants to inhabit you, fill you, sit with you, encourage you, even as Jesus did, sit on the shore side and cook up some fish for you, or whichever your case may be, chop us out. <laughs> but he wants to be alive in you and working with you to cause you to recognize that he loves you, but he also loves others too. And he wants to encourage you to be open to that love so that you could share the wisdom God has given you or listen to the wisdom God has given someone else to encourage you. Because it's grace for grace. And if you could learn to go to that place, then you're going to find the love is easier to share than the condemnation which God never said for you to do. He is, before all things, the Amen, the beginning of the creation of God. The beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, I was his daily delight, rejoicing always before him. Yea, before the day was I before the day was, I am he. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. What more can we do or say than to be with Jesus? What more can we ask or desire than to know that as little as we know about the Son of Man, and we think we know a lot, there's so much more we don't know about the Son of God and we have yet to learn. I think the greatest experience yet is to find that even as great and as magnificent as God is and his son has become and has always been we're going to discover that God creates in us a desire to become like him 
and then to change us into the image of his son to be just so designed and coordinated to become magnificent me you wow i have a destiny yet to fulfill and so do you